My name is David Betridge and welcome to this video on how to write a solver for the round number puzzles problem using C sharp. So the problem is reasonably straightforward and it's really a simplified version of a Sudoku puzzle. So similar to Sudoku, um, so in Sudoku you have a 9 by 9 grid, in this case we've only got an 8 by 8 grid and you have to populate all the rows and all the columns with the numbers 1 to 8. Now, unlike Sudoku, where you, you don't have these sub boxes as well, so in Sudoku you'll, you also have nine lots of three by three boxes. We don't have those. But what we do have is we have some cells which are shaded grey and some which are shaded white. And the grey ones have to be odd numbers, and the white ones have to, to be even numbers. So in this case, we can put the number two in that cell, but we couldn't put in the number three. And here we could put in. Um, five for example, but we can put in a six, but it has to be an odd number. So it's quite a straightforward puzzle and I solved it using pen and paper earlier and um, it wasn't particularly complicated, but what I thought it would be a nice puzzle to use to extend the um, solve I wrote in the previous video and to try and make that solve a bit more generic and eventually make it to the point where we use and solve any of these types of problems. So the way the solver works, if you haven't seen the video, is for each cell we work out all the possible values that can go in that cell. So initially the numbers 1 to 8 can go in any cell, so all their possible values are set to 1 to 8. We then apply constraint to remove that list. So we have a constraint that says a number can only appear in a row once, so we can remove 1 and 7 from that list of possible values. And we have a constraint that says um, a number can only appear in a column once, so we can remove 2, 3 and 4 from that list of possible values. And we keep doing that until we get down to one value in which case we know that is the value of that square, or we get to the point where um, a value only exists in one of these cells. So for example, if there's only one cell that had a possible value of 6, then we know that that cell must contain the number 6. So here's the C-sharp program from before. So to begin with, I'm just going to tidy it up slightly. The first thing I'm going to do is move the interfaces and classes into their own files. just so it's a bit easier to see what's going on. And I'm going to the last one. And the next thing is, with the puzzle in the last video, we had a 5x5 five five grid. So this time we've got an 8x8 eight eight grid, so we need a way of actually being able to um, change the size of the grid because at various places we've got the number 5 hard-coded. Um, I think for these types of puzzles it's always going to be a square, which might make life easier. Um, otherwise we need to do... So column is the first dimension. So it's actually the length we want. Yes, yeah, column, column, and row, so that would be one. And because it's this, yeah, it's going to have to be a square because the list of possible values doesn't make sense otherwise, so we can take even dimension for that. So zero is columns. And one is rows. Too many more of these to do. Okay, and I think, yes, zero is column one of the rows. And row constraint. So I think we should have got, got them all. So if we run it, it should still just work as before. Which it does, solved a problem from the last video. 
So the idea is the only thing we need to change for different puzzles is this initial setup code. Let's rename this method as well because it only applies to that previous puzzle. So this is an add less than greater than string. Copy that and also put it into its own method. So that was the So that's the method of setting up one of those types of games, which is here. So we're not going to call that this time, we're going to have a, a new method for setting up a round number game. So, as I said, we can have make by grid. That's going to start off fine. And then we know some initial values. So we know like 0, 2, for example, has to be a 1. So the way we did that before would have been something like this, which is instead of, so we start off with all possible values being 1 to 8, and then we're going to replace that with just 1. However, what I'm thinking might be a cleaner way of doing that is instead of doing it in here is actually have a constraint and that constraint says it has to be a 1. So what I mean by that is we have a new constraint so it must be constraint and it gets given the number to check so value to check and then we return true if that value we're checking is a 1. And the reason I think we should do it like this is then when we come to do odd and even numbers, we can just apply a different lambda function for checking with the values odd or even. So let's create that constraint. So that's our rule. It's the number we're checking. So I think this should be straightforward, I think. So the value is not valid if the rule is true. So we just need to negate the rule. Because the constraints are checking for failures rather than successes, so we have to do it the opposite way around. And we just pass in our possible value. And we don't care about the rest of the board because it is just that one value we need to check. Okay. So that's going to fix that first value to be a 1. So now we just need to go through and add in all the others. So I might just number the rest of these cells to make my life easier. I'm not very good at counting. And I'm just going to drag this onto the other window so I can quickly put these in. So I'll do them row by row. So in fact, I've got that first one wrong. It's two across, zero down. And then it's six across, zero down. Should be a seven. That's the first row. So if we run this now, this should, after it's run for a couple of times, it should vastly eliminate the values that can go here. So what values can go here? So we start with 1 to 8, and we're immediately going to remove 1 and 7, and also 2, 3, and 4. So the only numbers that can go there are actually 5, 6, and 8. 5, 6, and 8, I think. So 
the first time through, I don't think it's going to eliminate anything, which it doesn't. And the second time through, yeah, down to 5, 6, and 8, so that's working nicely. So it has to run through twice, because the first time through, it doesn't know this cell hasn't reduced its values. So you can only eliminate one from here once this is down to just containing the number one. And likewise with seven and the values in the column. So the next thing to do is to handle the odd and even constraints. Right, so if all the values were even, if all the values had to be even, then what we'd need to do is add a constraint to every cell that says it's valid if the value to check is even. So in other words, it's modulus 2 equals 0. And if the value had to be odd, we do the same thing, but it has to be 0. So the challenge we have here is to work out for each cell whether or not it should be an odd or even. So we can say if even, okay, let's say cell must be even. If the cell must be even, we do that, and else we do that. So can, is it good enough? So what we what we're doing is going column then row. So we can't just con we can't just go true false true false true false true false and continue because at the start of each row we need to toggle again because we've got those two are the same. Um, so how can we do this? Oh, I suppose we could toggle it twice. So we have a boolean that says cell must be even. So that must start off with false because the first one is odd. That first cell must be odd. And then once we've applied that, we negate that ready for the next one. And then once we finish the row, we do it again. I think that might work. Oh, and it has, and it solved our board. Now let's look, check some of those numbers with my pencil version, and yes, that looks good. Oh, so that's actually worked quite nicely. So all we've done is we've defined, we took our previous solution, and we defined another constraint, which is a, quite a generic constraint, because it takes in a lambda function that can evaluate a value in a given cell. So that's quite good. So it's a shame it's not an easy way of setting these up. I have to think about whether there's a nice way of defining what all these constraints are. Because this is quite sort of a tedious and error prone internet like this. Right, well, in the next video, we'll look at another type of problem. Thank you for watching, and hopefully, you found that interesting.